Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gravity Shed, a place where we learn to harness and enjoy gravity as well as tame her ferocious beauty. Come on, way! going to be my first real YouTube video so what I thought I'd do is give you five handy hints and tips to help you get through your summer mountain leader assessment now COVID has spoiled everyone's chances of really getting out there in the mountains properly you know we've all had to obey social distancing and do our best to contain the spread of this horrific pandemic now a lot of people have had to change trips cancel trips and even cancel their assessments so hopefully I'll be doing this video just at the right time as summer is looming Also, end of the video, I've got a little hack that I use myself during summer mountain leaders, which is really gonna help you get the edge on the competition. I suppose, as always, when somebody makes a video like this with five hints and tips, five tricks, five whatever, um, a lot of it's gonna be down to personal preference and personal experience. You know, there could be a million things that you're gonna have to do in summer mountain leader assessment. For instance, um, when I did it, you still had to do river crossings and secure on steep ground, do all that type of stuff physically. So these are just five things that I think are gonna be great. And for me, the one I'm gonna put at the starting is, never guess, Naismith knew best. So, as a summer mountain leader, you're going to be leading a variety of people or clients up the hill. These could be school groups, they could be just people after enjoying themselves. It could even be you're trying to build yourself up for further qualifications so you can become an assessor yourself. What you're not there to do is this. Listen, fellas, pipe down, pin your ears back and get up that mountain. Get of course not, you're there to give a safe, enjoyable, comfortable, potentially even educational experience to those that would like to get out into the mountains. So as with your MLT, your assessor is going to ask you for an estimation of time. They're going to show you on the map where to go to and it's going to be your job then to navigate the team there. Now if you're, a, if you're a few minutes over and a few minutes under, it's not going to be the end of the world, but you are going to look pretty bad if you end up 25-30 minutes away from your time because that could offset throughout your entire journey and means you get back late not entirely keeping the group safe. Now myself, personally, I like to work off a very simplified version of Naismith's rule. I think the best thing to go for is 15 minutes per kilometre and add one minute on for every contour line that you travel upwards. Now it will also add a minute on if I'm travelling downhill and the contour lines are close together and the ground is steep. This can be group dependent. If you've got a fit group, they may be faster. If you've got a slow group, they may be slower. But it's a good ballpark figure to work from. Now, there are quite a few techniques that you can use to ensure that you stick to that 15 minutes per kilometre. You could use your stopwatch, use your timer. Um, you could also count your paces and ensure that your paces are in time with your timer. What I like to do personally is look at the team and look at myself. If I'm breathing, if I'm really struggling, we are definitely going too fast. Same goes for the team. If the team are talking freely and comfortably and enjoying themselves, visibly not under any serious stress, we're probably going slow enough. And I do mean slow enough, because this near Smith's rule, 15 minutes per kilometre plus the contours, does seem slow when you're doing it. And you know what? If it does turn out that you've overestimated the time, you've said to the team and to the instructor or to the assessor that it's going to take an hour and you get there, or you realise you're going to get there within 45 minutes, stop the team. Offer them a water break, ask them about their physical condition and their well-being, point out a bit of flora and fauna, maybe even give them a little bit of your knowledge. Hey team, did you know that William Wilson Naismith was born in 1856 in the Scottish Highlands? He was an original key founder member of the Scottish Mountaineering Club. 
1892, he coined and invented his now very famous Naismith rule, which people still use to navigate today, believe it or not. A lot of us use a very simplified version, but his legacy lives on. Sadly, William Wilson Naismith passed away in 1935 and is still very missed. Which leads me on nicely to number two. Knowledge is power. So, you're not just being assessed on your ability as a mountain leader to navigate a team across some marshland in the middle of nowhere. You're being assessed on your ability to be a full-scale mountain leader. Now, you need to know everything that you can know about weather cycles, predicting the weather and using the various different formats to gain your weather. You need to be showing the instructors that you know the geology of the area, you know how the mountains were formed, you know about the local landscape which you are operating in. You need to be telling people about flora and fauna, about animals, about useful information around the area that you're operating in. Even down to things such as local myths and legends of the area are gonna keep your group and your assessor inflamed and interested. Be sensible with this as well though. If you're doing your assessment up in the Cairngorms, there is absolutely no point in learning all about the round leaf sundew because you're never gonna find it up there. What you need to be doing is first of all, getting yourself some bankers, things like sphagnum moss and geographicus lichen and um, slow rush and all that type of stuff. Get those bankers down, find some good information about them and then start researching a few more of the little bits and bobs that you're gonna find in the um, area that wherever you're operating. Remember, bullshit baffles brains. Next. Big number three, effective use of the traffic light system. So when it's your turn to lead the group, the assessor is gonna take you away a little bit of distance away from the rest of the group so they can see or hear um, what's going on. You're gonna be shown by the assessor where you're going to, you'll then get your bearing, you'll make an estimation of time, if necessary, you'll brief your team and then you'll be off. Now you're gonna burn out quit pretty quickly if straight out the gates you are on your map and you are counting paces and you are on fire. You might have up to a kilometer to go on this uh, route and the starting part of the navigation could be macro navigation. So my advice to you is use the traffic light system, start off in green. Green means when you go. You're gonna start off fairly relaxed. You're gonna have a few waypoints in your head. You're gonna be walking on a bearing. You're gonna be fairly chilled at first. Macro navin, looking for those big features and ticking off those way marks in your head as you pass them. So as we start getting to within about 500 meters of our destination, we're gonna tick over into amber in the traffic light system. At this point, I'm gonna slow the team down slightly. We're gonna start being a little bit more careful about our micro navigation now. We're gonna be trying to tick off the contour lines and the bends in the contour lines as we go. We're gonna be looking a lot more carefully for smaller features and trying to hone in a little bit more carefully into exactly where we need to go. So as we get to those last few hundred meters, we wanna be getting into the red light zone, baby, of that traffic light system. We then need to be on fire. We need to be extremely careful about every step we take and every move we make, baby. So we're gonna be looking out for every bend in the contour lines. We are gonna be ensuring to we are within an eight-figure grid reference of where we need to be. We're gonna be looking around for ground signs, the smallest ground signs, whether they're tiny little outcrops, little bends, tiny re-entrance. We might even, in a micro navin situation, be looking for features that are on the map that aren't actually on the ground anymore in their full state such as old roman walls and things like that okay there should still be ground signs so you should always be able to find these things but the last tier the red is where you really need to be on it like an actual car bonnet <laughs> now when you are in this red zone, when you are in the red part of your traffic light system, if you do need to leave the team for any reason, maybe to go and check over the top of a close by ridge uh, for any ground signs that you might not be able to see from where you are, ensure that you brief your team to stay where they are and do not walk off. And I'll say this because during my MLT, an individual just vanished off over a ridge. They were meant to be leading. They just vanished to look for some path that they couldn't find. Um, our trainer just told us to carry on walking and we all hid in a bush and it was hilarious. But that could be pretty stressful if you're under assessment. You come back, the team's gone. Oops. Number four, for the night navigation phase of your assessment, carry two torches. So when I'm navigating at night, I like to carry two torches. I have a decent head torch that I'm going to use for close-up stuff, such as checking my map, keeping an, eye out, keeping an eye out on my map, and looking at the local vicinity within 50 meters or so. I also like to have a nice high-powered, focusable beam so I can check my port and starboards, uh, looking for those features that might be easily seen during the day, but might be quite difficult to see in the pitch black.
Don't be like that guy though, are we, man? And now on to number five, get the clap. Now, before your filthy mind start running away with you, what I mean by that is communication, line of sight, avoid problems, and position of most usefulness. Now, this is not just mountain navigators course, this is mountain leaders course, and if you hit every point of clap, you will be leading, not just yomping off the front. Right communication, talk to your team, ensure that you communicate with your team, whether that be offering them drinks, asking them about their well-being, about their welfare, ensuring that nobody has blisters, make sure that you do communicate with them and not just leave them in the back there to deal with their own problems. Communication also comes down to things like talking to them about local flora and fauna, telling them about the local myths, the geology and all that type of stuff we spoke about earlier on in the knowledge segment. Line of sight, maintain line of sight of your group at all times. If the clag starts coming in and it gets really, really foggy, you don't wanna have your group spread out in a big long line. If you're at the front and you can't see the person at the back, you don't know what has happened to that person at the back. They could have tripped and fallen over. You would not know. So make sure that you do maintain that line of sight. Don't let the fittest person fly off the front. Don't let the weakest person fall off the back also. Avoid problems. Now this comes down to the fact that avoiding problems is always better than curing problems. I use river crossings as an example for this. Now, as a summer mountain leader, you're not allowed to intentionally add a river crossing into your route, but under an emergency circumstance, you should have the skills and knowledge and ability to river cross as you will do in your assessment. Well, certainly I did. We had to cross the same river four or five times showing different ways of crossing a river safely with and without ropes. Now, with this river example, Rather than crossing the river, getting your team wet and cold, getting on the other side and then doing whatever you need to do to make them warm again, just avoid the problem in the first place. Look on your map, find a crossing point, find a narrow point, find a, a shallow bit, take the detour to avoid the problem rather than curing it after it's happened. And finally there, the position of most usefulness. Position yourself in a place within the group where you are gonna be most useful as a leader. If you are micro and having it's your job, to get the team to that location that you are micro navigating to. So get off the front, ensure that you concentrate on that navigation. If, however, you are on very easy, simple terrain, for instance, on a path that cannot be missed, drop to the back and support the less physically able members, give them some encouragement and help the team. If you are coming up to steep ground, position yourself where you can help people with perhaps a bit of confidence roping or just give them a little bit of a cheer up or show them where to put the hands and feet position yourself where you can be useful. Brilliant, so as I said, I've got a little bit of bonus content for you. Now this is more of a hack to help you get through your assessment. I used it myself and it helped me shine bright like a diamond. But well, keep us on the QT right oh. oh, we man, not that close, like, right. Listen in, right, it's a good one. Okay then, so, as you know, during your assessment, there's gonna be maybe four of you. One person's gonna be leading, the rest of the three are just gonna be following. Now, you've got two options here. Follow along, have a little chat, look at some scenery and relax, or stay switched on. My advice to you, stay switched on. So what's gonna happen? The assessor is gonna take the leader away. The assessor's gonna show the leader where they're going. What's the leader gonna do? They're gonna take a bearing, and they're gonna go like this. They're gonna look in the distance to where they are going. So what you do next is the following. So the leader has looked in the direction that they're gonna head. First thing I'm gonna do is look in the same direction. I'm gonna point my compass in that direction. I'm gonna put the red in the shed so I know the bearing that the leader is heading on. What I'm then gonna do is take that bearing to my map. So as I say, what I'm gonna then do is take this bearing to the map. Now I've put the red in the bed so I know that we're gonna be going somewhere along this line. So what I'm gonna do, before we even set off, while the leader's still trying to figure out their plan, I'm gonna be having a look along this line. Here I've got a wall, I'm thinking, oh, could we be going somewhere along this wall? Maybe maybe trying to uh, micro and after the end of the wall. Are we looking for one of these re-entrants? Perhaps, perhaps one of the rocky outcrops, one of the buildings. We've got a, an old cart path here, a disused quarry. We've got lots of little features that we could be going to. So as the leader's leading from Bulchum or Chlan, I'm gonna be ticking these features off. I'm going to, right, there's the first re-entrant, we're not going to that. I can see the wall over to the left. Yeah, we're not going to that. We've missed this re-entrant, missed that re-entrant. Okay, we've gone over the stream via a safe route. We're coming up towards a disused quarry. I'm literally ticking off each one of these little buildings as we go along. So when we finally get to, for instance, here, a little point there at the end of the rocky outcrop, 
as soon as the instructor, as soon as the leader stops us, I'm going to be straight to the instructor. Say, look, mate, I know exactly where we are. I'll be the first one there. The instructor is going to think that I am literally a legend of navigational skills. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy life to watch this video. If you do like it, let me know in the comments what you liked about it. If there's anything you think I could do different, by all means, tell me in the comments, be constructive, because this is one of my first, well, it's my first upload. It's only the second video I have filmed. Um, I hope it helps you get through your assessment. This isn't a definitive list. This is just things that I thought were real handy. So get out there, enjoy the mountains, enjoy the outdoors, and get amongst it. Thank you.